So you fancy yourself a quality new smartphone, but unfortunately your bank statement is looking about as healthy as a diabetic pensioner on a strict diet of Krispy Kreme donuts and special brew. Well, no worries, because these days you can spunk out less than £300 on a smartphone and still expect brilliant battery life, impressive game and performance, dependable camera tech, and quite often some very handy features that you won't find in mega pricey flagships. Stuff like a headphone jack and actual memory card support. So this is my personal pick of the best budget-friendly smartphones you can grab right now for under £300 that I've personally tested and reviewed. You can check out more on all these smartphones right here on Techspert. And for more on the latest and great tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up, Xiaomi's very smart Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G is hit in the UK imminently for a price that won't completely bollocks your wallet. It's a small looking slab, although it's also a proper whopper at almost 6.7 inches. Good news for movie fans as that spacious 120Hz AMOLED screen is a bit of a stunner, with sharp contrast and poppy colours. And the audio is just as good because you've got a respectable stereo speaker set up on here, plus a headphone jack with high res audio certification. Sploosh! Of course, how lovey-dovey you'll get with the Redmi Note 11 Pro does depend somewhat on how much you get on with MIUI, Xiaomi's very own smartphone launcher. Personally, I quite like it these days, especially as Xiaomi is embracing a more sort of stock Android vibe while also chucking in a veritable buffet of bonus features. You've got the likes of that all-encompassing control center and a proper one-handed mode and the ability to stream YouTube audio while the screen is hibernating. It's just a shame then that Xiaomi is kind of chuffing slow when it comes to actually updating its smartphones both on the OS and the security side of things. We've actually got the older Android 11 out of the box here on the Redmi Note 11 Pro so hopefully it'll be getting Android 12 soon. The Snapdragon 695 chipset can handle even quite demanding gaming shenanigans like Genshin Impact, with 5G support chucked in as well. And the battery life is bloody good too. In fact, the only real downside is the 108 megapixel primary camera, which is generally fine, but it is limited in low light and for home movie capture. But anyway, if you want to know more about the Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G, well, definitely go check out my in-depth review, which is live right now. And also be aware that another smartphone that basically packs identical specs and features is the Poco X4 Pro, which just launched at MWC. I've got a full unboxing live right now on the channel as well. It's essentially the same phone, just rebranded. So definitely check the price of this one before you get that one, uh, just to see which one's actually cheaper. Now another one of my favourite budget blowers at this price point and one which also just launched in 2022 is the OnePlus Nord CE2 5G. Don't be fooled by the simple and not particularly attractive plastic finish. Besides the lack of micro SD memory card support on this thing there's pretty much bugger all to complain about. That 6.43 inch AMOLED screen is bright, sharp and poppy with HDR10 Plus support and a 90Hz refresh rate for smooth sailing. And no worries on the audio front either because like the Redmi you've got a headphone jack and dependable Bluetooth streaming. This time the launcher of choice is Oxygen OS and it's squatting very happily on top of Android 12. Hooray, the latest version of Android OS. And Oxygen OS adds in a whole bunch of extra bonus features similar to MIUI, the likes of the very chill out Zen modes and some really strong customization options. And even better, OnePlus has you covered for the reasonably long haul as well. You got two guaranteed Android OS updates and also three years of security updates chucked in there. The Nord CE 5G is powered by MediaTek's Dimensity 900 chipset. And this proves absolutely fine for your everyday shenanigans and can even handle a decent bit of gaming on the side as well. Yeah, you've got 5G support for getting online, a 4500mAh battery which serves up dependable all day use, plus 65 watt SuperVU charging support, so you can juice it all up again in the morning in about half an hour. As for that 64 megapixel primary camera sensor slapped there on the back end of the OnePlus Nord CE2, well this does an absolutely fine job again of your everyday snaps and it can actually shoot at 4K resolution for your video as well. So overall, highly respectable stuff and highly recommended by myself for this price point. Now I just mentioned the brilliant Poco X4 Pro which only just launched at a sport and very very similar specs to that Redmi Note 11 Pro but definitely if your budget is a little bit tighter well do not sleep on the older Poco X3 Pro which you can grab right now for just a snifter over 200 quid. This can handle everything you need thanks to the Snapdragon 860 SoC, even a tasty bit of Genshin Impact if you keep the detail levels on low to medium settings. Like the Redmi Note 11 Pro you have a 6.67 inch Full HD Plus display, although this time it is IPS rather than OLED tech. But the visuals are still fine for watching shows on the go or kicking back with a flick while the adaptive refresh rate maxes out at 120Hz. 
The Poco X3 Pro also boasts a decent stereo speaker setup. You've got a headphone jack down below, plus excellent reliable Bluetooth streaming support. You've got NFC for your contactless payments. You've got an excellent edge mounted fingerprint sensor, which is super responsive and reliable. You've basically got everything you need. I rather like the 48 megapixel camera sensor too, which captures quite sharp pictures of even the more squirmy of subjects, as well as respectable 4K footage. In fact, beyond the slightly garish design, there's really not much to dislike about the Poco X3 Pro. It is proper lush. And of course, Poco smartphones, uh, as they were previously part of the Xiaomi family, they do still use that MIUI launcher with all of its foibles, so just be aware. For more Poco goodness as well, definitely check out the Poco X3 GT. Again, a full review is live right now here on Techspert, which boasts the Dimensity 1100 chipset, which can blaze through any game out there, including Genshin Impact. And you've also got the excellent Poco F3, from last year, which you'll occasionally find dipping below that £300 price point when it's on sale. And because it holds up so well, I recently did a nine month review of the Poco F3, so definitely check that out for all you need to know. Now, Motorola is definitely another budget smartphone manufacturer well worth keeping an eye on. And at this sort of price point, one of their best efforts is the Moto Edge 20 Lite, which you can snaffle for just a penny under 300 quid. This sports a MediaTek Dimensity 720 chipset, which means smooth performance whatever you're up to. While the Moto can easily survive a lengthy day with its ruddy massive 5000 milliamp battery. You've got another pocket fill and 6.7 inch display, but it is an OLED screen with HDR10 Plus support. Ideal for all your Netflix and your Disney Plus and, and such forth. Plus, you've also got a headphone jack and you've got micro SD memory card support for expanding the 128 gigs of built in storage. As for the camera tech, that main sensor is a 108 megapixel beast that uses pixel binning to produce bright, natural looking snaps. It's definitely one of the better offerings in this budget phone roundup, so definitely if you can't get enough of snapping your food, your pets, your offspring, whatever, well seriously consider it. Now another smartphone brand that often pumps out good quality devices that offer solid value for money at this sort of price point is Realme and they've just launched the fresh new Realme 9 Pro. Sadly, I am yet to review this blower and it doesn't offer an AMOLED screen unlike some rivals may can do with a 120Hz IPS panel. But you've got the Snapdragon 695 SoC running the show which should once again offer smooth running while a whopping great 5000mAh battery should also give you all day play no worries. Admittedly, not super competitive specs compared with some of the competition that I've already brought up in this roundup, but I am a big fan of the slightly more expensive Realme 9 Pro Plus, which boasts a fantastic 50 megapixel main camera, full AMOLED display action, impressive longevity, and a slick Android 12 experience bolstered with Realme UI's bonus features. Now, sadly, the Realme 9 Pro Plus is going to be ever so slightly out of this budget price point when it hits the UK, but definitely keep an eye on that Realme website because they offer some good deals on their smartphones, usually only just a couple of months after they've launched. I've done a full review of this beast and it was absolutely fantastic, so definitely check it out. Now, in 2022, even Samsung fans will find some Galaxy handsets for this £300 price point, which still boast a similar One UI experience to those Wallet MTN S22 flagships. Now these cheapy galaxies can admittedly be a bit of a mixed bag at best, but one of the best ones you'll find at this price point that makes few compromises is the Samsung Galaxy M32. First impressions aren't amazing admittedly thanks to the plasticky design, but peer past those cheap aesthetics and you can't help but adore the 6.4 inch Super AMOLED screen, which is as bright, punchy and gorgeous as any of their affordable rivals despite a lack of HDR support. That 90Hz refresh rate matches a lot of the competition, while you've also got a headphone jack so you can get plugged straight in and enjoy some really nice crisp sound and audio. Performance comes courtesy of MediaTek's Helio G80 SoC, which does occasionally stumble, but it can generally cope with everyday existence, as long as you aren't much of a gamer that is. And no, sadly there is bugger all love for 5G. On the flip side though, it is a highly energy efficient chipset, so that basically means that in combination with the mighty 5000 milliamp battery crammed inside of this thing, you can enjoy all day play on the M32 without running out of juice. Samsung's One UI launcher is as lovable and feature stuffed as always, complete with a Nox security suite to keep your privates out of the eyes of naughty criminal types. And I was certainly impressed by the 64 meg main camera, which can capture natural looking pics and great family snaps even in quite testing conditions. Although yeah, the video chops aren't too hot. And again, as ever, if you want to know more, just go check out my full in-depth Galaxy M32 review, which is live right now.
And last up for this budget blower roundup, a quick shout out for the Infinix Zero 5G. You will need to import this Morpho here in the UK, but if you like them large, well, this 6.8 inch behemoth should hopefully satisfy. A Dimensity 900 chipset runs the show, so you can kill a few hours by killing a few of your fellow human beings, complete with built-in cooling and various gaming features. The 5000 milliamp battery means impressive longevity as well, and you've also got 5G connectivity and Wi-Fi 6 support. As for the downsides, well, you've got an IPS screen, while the 48 megapixel rear camera is also pretty basic stuff. So there you have it, that in a nutshell is my pick of the best budget-friendly smartphones you can grab in 2022 for under 300 quid. And I have also rounded up my favourite sub 400 pound budget smartphones, my favourite sub 200 pound budget smartphones if your budget is extremely tight. I've tried to only include smartphones that I've personally tested and reviewed as well, everything apart from that Realme 9 Pro, which I'm really hoping to get my mitts on soon. And if I missed out your own personal favourite budget smartphone, well, definitely let me know what a massive wang I am in the comments and tell me what your pick would be. And uh, for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug, subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.